Let us move on to cargo aircraft. Cargo aircraft basically are also called as freighters because their job is essentially to transport freight. Under the category of cargo aircraft again we have different aircraft types. Mostly these aircraft are converted from existing passenger or military aircraft usually at the end of their service life as far as the civilian operations is concerned. Essentially an aircraft may have a lot of residual life remaining when it ends its life for civilian purposes to carry passengers. So, it is very common to extend the usage of such aircraft by converting them into cargo variants of the basic passenger aircraft. Now, this conversion and the end of life may happen because of noise or environmental regulations in most cases it is either the noise li uh, limits or the emission limits which create a problem with the old aircraft and hence they have become obsolete. A good example is Cessna Caravan 208 which was converted into cargo master and uh, then into a super cargo master dedicatedly for FedEx. Similarly, a Boeing 747 also has a freighter version and Airbus 380 also has a 380F which is a freighter version of the same basic aircraft. There have been some attempts to design aircraft for dedicated cargo and freighters ab initio. One example from the channels of history is that of the spruce grues from the Hughes Aircraft Corporation and uh, recently a consortium between CASA of Spain and IPTN of Indonesia took up the design of a dedicated cargo as well as military aircraft called as the CN-235. And there are also attempts to have a joint civil military air cargo aircraft. Sometimes people wonder where is the cargo carried in a conventional airliner, of course it is carried in the belly. So, let us have a look. This shows the cross section of Airbus A320 where you can see that the fuselage is neatly compartmentalized into two separate segments. The upper segment which is shown here in which we have a six abreast seating layout and a passenger floor and below the floor in the belly we have this area where the cargo is carried and we call this as a belly area. In the case of Airbus A320, cargo in the belly is carried in a containerized form as shown here. There are dedicated uh, containers which are designed and the cargo that you carry is first filled in the containers and then the containers are pushed inside the aircraft. This is very helpful in saving time on loading and unloading of aircraft as well as in ensuring that uh, no cargo moves as the aircraft is flying. Plus, there are also some safety issues regarding any cargo which is uh, which can create a problem. Uh, maybe there is a small explosion that can be contained by uh, the container. Okay. Uh, however, Boeing 737 which is competing in the same market, it goes for palletized cargo system. It does not have a containerized cargo. Here is a cross section of a larger Airbus aircraft where you can see the top cabin has a seating of 8 abreast and on the bottom we have these containers, these are called as the LD3 containers. Containers to be carried on the aircraft come in various sizes and there are uh, there is a dedicated series LD3, LD4 etcetera. So, there are these dedicated containers which are designed keeping in mind their transportability below the belly or in the belly of a transport aircraft. Here is a comparison of the cross section of Boeing 737 versus Airbus A320. Uh, we notice that 
the both the aircraft have a six abreast seat layout and a clearly compartmentalized fuselage and the dimensions are also quite similar. Question arises is what is the need to have a dedicated cargo freighter aircraft? Why can we not continue with the current practice of converting a passenger aircraft into a cargo aircraft as and when needed? A study called as CLASS was commissioned by NASA in 1990. CLASS stands for Cargo Logistics Airlift System Study and this study was done by the Douglas Aircraft Company and the Lockheed Georgia Company and it came up with very interesting conclusions. In the comparison between the dedicated cargo aircraft versus the converted aircraft, it was found that a dedicated cargo aircraft would have 20 percent saving in the trip cost and 15 percent saving in the acquisition cost. So, one fifth of the cost is reduced in operating cost and uh, a bit less than that around one sixth is reduced in the acquisition. This study ensures that the comparison is at a comparable payload level. The numbers that you uh, see here are sensitive to labor and fuel costs and the cargo demand growth and it ignores the competition from modified aircraft. So, there is definitely a case for developing dedicated cargo aircraft. This graphic which has come from the Boeing airplane company shows how the freighter fleet will grow as projected by their estimates up to 2026. So, we notice that the current or the retained fleet is going to slowly come down linearly whereas there will be a conversion market, but there will be also uh, a huge amount. So, the current fleet will reduce from 2000 to around 630 units, they will be reduced to less than one third, uh, but there will be an addition of 3350 aircraft uh, of which the bulk will be from the converted ones, but there also will be substantial around 1000 aircraft which would be dedicated freighter aircraft. So, there is indeed a huge market for dedicated freighter aircraft also and nearly three-fourth of these will be the converted aircraft and the remaining 25 percent would be either the existing or the new ones. Let us have a look at some small cargo aircraft uh, which have been converted from PAX variants, passenger variants. The first aircraft that comes to mind is the Cessna 208 actually there is a Cessna 208 family. Cessna began this particular family with Cessna Caravan 1 which was uh, <coughs> flown for the first time in 82 and certified in uh, nearly a year later in 1984. It was a basic introductory model essentially for passenger operations, but this was converted into Caravan 675 with a modified with a change in the engine. Okay. Uh, and then there was a cargo master which was a pure cargo version of the Cessna caravan uh, for FedEx of which 40 were purchased. From the cargo master <coughs> uh, the design was modified uh, into grand caravan which is basically a 4 seat uh, 4 feet stretch of caravan 1 with the same engine. So, you carry more passengers, but you keep the same engine. So, with a small uh, loss in the performance and the ability, you are able to carry more people that is the Grand Caravan and then we had a Grand Caravan EX or the extended version which was certified in 2013. This one has a higher version of the engine PT6A 140 which improves its climb performance by more than one third. We then got a super cargo master which was a stressed version of uh, cargo master again it was dedicated for FedEx and 140 aircraft were purchased. And uh, also there is an amphibian version of the caravan, uh, caravan 1 which is called as a amphibian caravan which operates from uh, seas and lakes. So, this is the, the Cessna caravan the basic aircraft caravan 1. Uh, you can see that uh, it has these passenger windows and a high wing layout with the braced wing. On the bottom we have uh, a fuselage shape to carry 
certain items in the belly. The super cargo master is the one in which the windows are completely removed, everything else remains and you actually fill up the whole aircraft with cargo. And uh, from super cargo master, again a reverse version of a passenger aircraft was created called as the grand caravan. So, we went from a passenger aircraft to a cargo variant and the cargo variant was again converted back to a passenger aircraft in the name of grand caravan. So, this conversion takes place in both directions if needed. Just to give you an idea, here is the cargo cabin of a super cargo master. Uh, there is a partition which protects the crew from the movement of the cargo and you will notice that the fuselage has got this very uh, high strength floorboards and the seat rails and these seat rails are having notches at every approximately 1 inch location. So, you can actually adjust uh, the equipment at any particular point along the length of the fuselage. Another example of a popular aircraft which is a passenger variant into a cargo is the EMB 120 FC Brasilia. Uh, this aircraft has a payload of 3.5 tons on an empty weight of 7 tons and the max takeoff weight is 11.5 tons. Okay. So, you can see uh, in this aircraft the whole of the fuselage is meant for only carrying the cargo and uh, in the center of the fuselage there is a floor which is mounted with these uh, roller bearings which allow you to slide the cargo to a location that you need and then there are these curtains which are used to separate or isolate various uh, cargo pellets. Uh, there are four separate cargo compartments in this aircraft as we see along the length and there are two doors. There is a door on the back for cargo and there is a main door here. The cargo door of course is wider. Okay. So, we can see that the whole aircraft is compartmentalized into four uh, cabins and in these cabins you can carry uh, different types of cargo. Let us have a look now at some dedicated cargo freighters. Going back to history, we look at one aircraft called as the Messerschmitt Me321 Gigant which basically means giant. This aircraft was conceived in a period of only 14 days over 2 weeks in 1941 during the second world war. And the aim was to design an aircraft which can quickly be used to drop guns and tanks in Russia when the German forces were fighting the Russians. So, this is basically a gross rum lasten segler which in German means a large sized long range glider. And the mechanism used to launch this aircraft was also very unique, a bit dangerous, but very unique. It is called as Troika Schlemp. That means towing by 3. So, as you can see in the bottom, the aircraft was a glider. So, it had no engine of its own. It used to be towed by these 3 other aircraft and uh, <coughs> these aircraft were uh, powered by hydrogen peroxide. So, they gave a huge thrust and uh, you know they would pull the aircraft and they would just launch it. Once it launches the aircraft would just glide to the location land and release the cargo. But this uh, particular aircraft was a huge flop because it was very difficult to have a uh, three aircraft available always to launch it and it was very cumbersome. There were many accidents. So, therefore, it was a failure. Spruce Goose is a very famous aircraft which uh, was actually a flying boat, a dedicated huge flying boat. And uh, a movie called Aviator was launched in 2004 in which among many things there is a story of how this aircraft was designed and how it had its maiden flight 
after which it was never used commercially. As I mentioned, the Spanish company CASA and IPTN of Indonesia, they join hands together to come up with this dedicated freighter come military transport called as the CN-235. It was purchased by many other countries. Now, the largest operator of this aircraft happens to be Turkey and uh, many other countries like uh, Morocco, Pakistan, they have purchased this aircraft and they are using it. Of course, Indonesia also uses the aircraft for its military applications. There have been very interesting attempts to provide features on a cargo aircraft which improve its usability. One of the main requirements for a cargo aircraft is the ease to load and unload huge cargo. So, here is Canadier CL 44 D4 which looks very conventional in the first look, but pay attention to this particular portion on the fuselage where there are two huge hinges and when the hinges are uh, permitted to be opened, the whole fuselage actually swings across those hinges and then you have an empty tube from the rear in which you can load or unload cargo as shown in this particular picture. So, this is a very interesting uh, way of providing a feature of quick loading and unloading into a cargo aircraft. Here is the world's largest aircraft. The world's largest aircraft is AN-225 Miria, which is a dedicated heavy lifter. This is the world's largest aircraft. It weighs 640 tons, the max takeoff weight and it can carry a payload of, uh, of 254 tons on an empty weight of 285 tons and it carries 300 tons of fuel because there are 6 engines. So, there has been a world record of a single payload of around 189-190 tons. It can carry 80 large cars, 3 or 4 battle tanks. Each of the engines produces a thrust of 230 kilo newtons. The main landing gear of this aircraft has 32 wheels. Okay, it has 32 wheels and interestingly only one aircraft was built. The second one was also planned, but then the plans to build it were abandoned. So, there is only one aircraft of this type available in the world today. This aircraft is really large in size. Okay, to get an idea about its dimensions, the length of the aircraft is 84 meters and the wingspan of the aircraft is 88.4 meters. Okay. And if you look at the passenger, sorry, if you look at the cargo cabin, you have a height of 4.4 meters, a width of 6.4 meters and a gross length of around 43.4 meters available for you to carry the cargo. So, this is a real heavy lift aircraft and the main design requirement for this aircraft was to carry the Russian space shuttle called Buran. So, you can see in this picture the space shuttle from Russia mounted on top of the aircraft being transported. As I mentioned there are many world records in the name of AN-225 Maria as far as payload is concerned. Okay. So, you can see some numbers around 190 tons of payload single item. 250 odd tons total airlifted payload, 247 tons is the max payload that can actually be mounted. Let us have a quick comparison between the four biggies okay, based on length. If you go in the increasing order of length, you have the spruce grooves followed by Airbus A380-800, followed by Boeing 747-8, followed by the AN-225 Maria. So, based on length, the longest among the four biggies is Maria and the shortest is spruce grooves. But if you base a comparison on wingspan, then Boeing 747-8 is the smallest, the Airbus A380-800 is the second largest, the Maria comes third, but the aircraft with the largest wingspan is the huge H4 spruce grooves. So, these four aircraft 
are called as the four biggies because they are the largest aircraft which have ever been built. Let us have a look at large freighters which are derivations of passenger aircraft. Here is a cross section of Airbus A380 when it carries passengers as we know the Airbus A380 is an aircraft that has twin passenger cabin along its entire length. It is a double decker aircraft for passengers, but actually it has got three decks the bottom one for the containerized cargo and it can carry 480 to 650 passengers. But when we use it as a pure freighter, then the Airbus A380F uses all the three passenger cabins, the two passenger cabins and the bottom for carrying a total of 150 tons of cargo. Here is the big daddy, the Airbus Beluga, which was designed essentially to carry large sub assemblies, fuselage of the Airbus aircraft for final assembly at Toulouse. And recently, the Beluga XL was launched and tested by the Airbus. And uh, let us have a short video describing the first test flight of Beluga XL. These are the crew members who are a part of the flight testing team. So, notice it needs 5 crew members. This is a tow tractor which is uh, pushing it back to take it to the runway for takeoff. This is the flight control center where all the key parameters of the aircraft as it flies are being monitored. Thanks for your attention, we will now move to the next section.